Shalom, Israel. Most High Christ bless. Uh, this 15 minutes with the captain. I'm Captain Naon. Shalom, Israel. Officer Elia. All right. And uh, this is Houston, of course. And um, today's topic we're going to touch on is Holy Trinity lies. Holy Trinity lies. All right. Because we know this Christianity, uh, you know, Catholicism about this Trinity doctrine. All right. And we're going to start off in John 5 and 7. And I'm going to read to you the definition of, doc, of tr uh, Trinity. It says, also called Blessed Trinity, Holy Trinity, the unity of three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, is one Godhead of three fold uh, personalities of the divine, divine being. So basically saying you got different personalities, but three different entities don't make sense so is god christ and the holy ghost the same or the same entity no they are separate all right and we go break it down today so you can get a better understanding of they're not the same entity but they are all on one accord all right with what the most i said to what his son came and did of what the most i uh instructed him to do Amongst the, the Holy Ghost of what the scriptures say. All right. So let's go there. John 5. First John 5 and 7. It's the book of First John chapter 5 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Mm -hmm. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. These three are one. Why it's said like that is because they're on one accord. All right. And we're going to get precepts proving that they're on one accord. All right. Um. And understand it, it says three that bear working in heaven, all right? Christ was in heaven with the Father before all this that we um, own the world, everything you see that exists today, he was there, all right? But let's go to uh, John 1 and 4. I'm sorry, John 1 and 1. Then we go jump to 14, all right? Let's see. The makings of Christ. What, what Christ represents. All right. <clears throat> it's the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh -huh. In the beginning was the Word, mm -hmm. and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So it say, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So it's talking about Christ. Christ was with God, and the Word became flesh. So read 14. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, mm -hmm. the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Only begotten of the Father is who? Christ. Go ahead. Full of grace mm -hmm. and truth. Mm -hmm. Jump back up to verse 2. Verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. The same, which is talking about Christ, was in the beginning with God. All right, go ahead, read verse 14. Verse 14, and the word was made flesh mm -hmm. and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Right, so it's telling you that Christ came to do what? J John was preparing the way for Christ, and Christ came to bring a better understanding of the, the word and to let his people know what they have to do now. All right, because a lot of things were abolished under Christ. Okay, so let's go to uh, John 10 and 30. John 10 and 30. Again, Christ, he came to do as he saw what his father did. All right, go ahead. This is the book of John chapter 10 and verse 30. Mm -hmm. I and my father are one. Keep going. Then the Jews took up. Stones again to stone him. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? Right, so he's showing you and telling you, Me and my Father are one. The things that I do are the works of my Father. You see that? So he's showing you that he didn't come to do his own will. And we're going to prove it in the scriptures. Christ didn't have his own mindset like most of us have today. All right, we have our own mindset. On how we want to do things. How we perceive things should be. Alright. Christ didn't come in with that agenda. Alright. The word was made flesh. 
He came in the flesh to do what? Die for us, the nation of Israel. Let's go to John 7 and 16. John 7 and 16. It's the book of John, chapter 7 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Who sent Christ? His father. All right. The, the, the creator of all. He sent his son to be a, a, resur uh, to be a, a atonement for Israel. All right. Keep reading. If any man will do his will, mm -hmm. he shall know of the doctrine whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So it said, if any man do his will, the will of who? The Father. And we're going to get the will in a minute, but understand and do the will of the Father, he shall know the doctrine. He shall know what Christ's saying is not off. All right? The way he's speaking is not off. Okay? Because they know that they read the Old Testament and he was prophesied in the Old Testament through and throughout. They say, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. The things that I'm speaking to you was spoken of by my father. Okay? Let's go to John 12 and 40. 49. John 12 and 49. It's the book of John chapter 12 and verse 49. Mm -hmm. For I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me. So he... Christ keeps saying the same thing. He said, I'm not spoken of myself. I didn't come to do my own will, but the will of the Father that sent me. So why do you keep referring to another being, another <clears throat> entity, if they're the same people? Right? It don't make sense. Keep going. For I've not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, mm -hmm. he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. He said he gave him a commandment on what he should say and speak. He didn't do anything different than what he saw his father do. You understand? From there, John 6 and 38. <laughs> this is the book of John, chapter 6 and verse 38. Mm -hmm. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, mm -hmm. but the will of him that sent me. The will of the father that sent me. Let's go to Psalm 40 and 8. All right, because we understand it now that Christ didn't come to do what he please, what pleases him, but what pleases the Father. All right, showing you that if he wanted to make his own decisions, he wouldn't be referring back to somebody that's over him, which is his Father, the Most High. All right, go ahead. Psalms chapter forty and verse eight. Mm -hmm. I delight to do Thy will, O my God. Mm -hmm. Yea, Thy law is within my heart. You say, I delight to do thy will. This, Christ just said that in the verse we just read before in John 12. He said, I delight to do thy will. He said, I come not to do my own will, but the will of the Father. Christ came to fulfill that which his Father sent him to fulfill. And we're going to get an understanding of what he sent him to fulfill as well. So now let's jump to the Holy Ghost because these three are one. The Most High, Christ, and the Holy Ghost. They're all a representation of what? The commandments. Okay, let's read that. Uh, Acts 7 and 51. Because, again, these commandments we had all the way in the beginning. All right? Which Christ was in the beginning. All right? And now, Christ had to come back and show us the better way. Go ahead. The book of Acts chapter 7 and verse 51. Mm -hmm. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. So is this Holy Ghost some type of, you know, say Christ is a spirit floating and this, that, and the third, and, you know, all this mystical stuff that people say. It said, we resist the Holy Ghost. It's going to explain to you what the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit is, that we as a nation resist. Go ahead. As your fathers did, so do ye. Mm -hmm. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? Right, because Christ was persecuted of his own. They hated him. Why? Because he was telling them the truth. Scriptures say, do I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Yes. Our people hate the truth. They hate right. All right? They hate to be corrected. Okay, go ahead. And they have slain them which, have sh which showed before of the coming of the just one. They slain the prophets before. They prophesied of Christ. They told of his coming. Okay, go ahead. Of whom... Ye have been now the betrayers and murderers mm -hmm. who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. They received the law 
and didn't keep the law. Okay? This is what Christ had to come back and establish what amongst the nation of Israel because they forgot about it. All right? Now, let's go to Acts 3 and, I'm sorry, Matthew 5 and 17. Matthew 5 and 17. I quoted that he didn't come to do his own will. In the scriptures, we're reading this. And we're showing you that Christ had an agenda. All right? He was sent on a mission. You know, that, that, uh, that stealth mission, you know. Read that. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So you have a lot of people, which is a lot of people, that say Christ came to fulfill, to, well, he came and fulfilled everything. You know, he battered on the cross. He paved the way. He paid it all, all this stuff, all these different sayings. But Christ telling you he didn't come to take away the law. All right? He came to establish the law. All right? Keep reading. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, mm -hmm. one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Till all be fulfilled. So all has not been fulfilled. All right? We still... Here in captivity, we still have to be redeemed from this captivity. All right? So from there, let's go to Acts 3 and 18. Let's see what Christ came to fulfill. Remember, he came to die for the nation of Israel. He came to bring forth grace unto you so you can be able to repent. All right? Read that. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 18. 18. But those things which God before hath showed by the mouth of all his prophets, mm -hmm. that Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. He should suffer. The prophets talked about and spoke about Christ, that he should suffer. He, could, he should come and die for that nation, and not that nation only, which is talking about the, the northern kingdom. Because once you understand the scriptures, we're scattered abroad through the four corners of the earth. All right? So Christ came to fulfill that mission, not his own. All right? So now, let's go to uh, John 17 and verse 1. All right. So we've been showing you that Christ always been referring back to his father, showing you that they're not the same entity. All right. So we're going to see in other verses where Christ is spoken to about from the father and he's spoken to the father. So if they one in the same, why? It's like you saying Christ crazy and the most high crazy because they talking to themselves. Don't make sense. Let's read that. It's the book of John, chapter 17 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and mm -hmm. said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Right, so Christ always gave the honor to his father. He said, I want to glorify you. All right, I'm coming to do your will. I'm coming to fulfill the scriptures and what was written of me. All right, keep going. Verse 2, mm -hmm. as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou, as thou hast given him. Mm -hmm. And this is, the, is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Who God sent Jesus Christ to give you and, give you and bring you back to eternal life. To show you that, hey, you can have eternal life. It's called repentance. It's called keeping of the commandments. All right? Go ahead. I have glorified thee on the earth. Mm -hmm. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. You see that? I've glorified you on earth. All right? I went forth to the 12 tribes. I brought them back to you. All right? I told them to believe on me in the faith of Christ. Go ahead. And now, O Father, glorify thou me mm -hmm. with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Right, because what? He was with the Most High before the world was, right? Jump to verse 20. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. You see, believe on me through their word. Go ahead. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. See that, that the world, the world of Israel, they may believe that you have sent me. And it's going back to the, that they may be one as we are one. All right? Keep reading. 
and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, mm -hmm. that they may be one, even as we are one. You see that? Even as we are one. So not the same entity, but on one accord. The same understanding, the same beliefs, the same doctrines, all these things, we're not confused. The Father and the Son are on one accord, and the Holy Ghost is the Scriptures. They are all on one accord on what's the standard, who this Bible is for. We are the ones that's off course. We are the ones that's tossed to and fro, not knowing who we are. All right? So, from there, let's go to Marks 1 and 11. Mark 1 and 11. <clears throat> it's the book of Mark, chapter 1 and verse 11. And there came a voice from heaven, saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. See that? It said, came a voice from heaven, speaking on who? His Son, Christ, saying, This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased. All right. Now let's go to John 17. And one. So we conclude this thing, and it's for you to understand that Christ is not the Father. All right? And the Father didn't manifest itself here on earth in the form of Christ in the flesh. All right? Just like when Moses dealt with the Most High. All right? He couldn't look upon the Most High. He looked at his backside. All right? And I want Matthew 17. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse and one. verse 1. Mm -hmm. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, mm -hmm. and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, mm -hmm. and his face did shine as the sun, mm -hmm. and his raiment was white as the light. Mm -hmm. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. So he was transfigured. He changed. All right. That's why he had a white garment on, all right? And it says, And Moses and Elias, which represent the law and the prophets, all right? That's what they represented. It said, Talk with him. All right, go ahead. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. So he was concerned about, <clears throat> should we be here? All right, what's going on? They this the scam. All right, go ahead. If thou wilt, let us make here their three tabernacles, mm -hmm. one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. Right. So he wanted to make a tabernacle for each one of those. Each one of them, brother. Moses, Elias, and Christ. But the most high is for to tell him different. Go ahead. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. So the most high is overshadowing them. Go ahead. And behold, a voice out of the cloud. A voice out of the cloud. So he, right there at, on earth, right, and now... The Most High is coming and overshadowing them. Two different beings. Go ahead. Which said, this is my beloved son. So he's speaking. He said, this is my beloved son. Go ahead. In whom I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. Hear ye him. Hear ye him. He said, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. All right. So understanding Christ came to die for the nation of Israel. Let's go to John 10. To die for the nation of Israel. And the Most High God told you to hear him. All right? Uh, go to John 10 and verse 11. It's the book of John chapter 10 and verse 11. I saw that too. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, mm -hmm. but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. All right, so that's telling you that there's no other way that you can try to reach the pinnacle of getting to the most high and the kingdom, all these different things without going through Christ. You got a lot of people that don't believe in Christ. You got atheists. You got non-denominational. You got the fake Jewish people that don't. some of them don't believe in Christ. Go ahead. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Mm -hmm. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. Mm -hmm. And he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. They know who? Christ's voice. They know the elect hear the voice of Christ. They're going to follow him. Why? Because he was sent of the Most High. They know the Old Testament and what was prophesied. 
all right? And these things came to pass, all right? So jump to verse uh, 10. Verse 10. The I'm thief, sorry, nine, nine, nine. verse 9. I am the door, and by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. So he is the door. Christ is that door. He's the pathway that you have to go through. All right, go ahead. And shall go in and out mm -hmm. and find pasture. Mm -hmm. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Mm -hmm. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So Christ came to give us back our life. Came back to give us that, that connection between the people, the children of Israel, and the Most High God. All right, Without Christ, we were still strangers. Go ahead. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So that's why. At the end of everything, Christ came to die for the nation of Israel. And him, his Father, and the Holy Ghost are on one accord on the mission in which he came. All right? So I pray that y'all got something from this. Uh, Israel, continue to watch uh, the classes, 15 minutes with the captains. And Lord, we'll see you next time. Shalom. Most high Christ bless. Shalom, Israel. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.